So good morning, everyone. I'm Lorenzo Cazzaro, a second year PhD student in computer science at Kafoska University. And today I would like to present you our contribution in the field of fairness or machine learning, whose title is Explainable Global Fairness Verification of Three Based Classifiers. As I work with Stefano Calzavara, Cadu Lucchese, and Federico Marcuzzi, another PhD student as me, who's attending also the conference. So fairness for machine learning has become a, a very important topic. Give me a second. Okay, has become a very important topic because of the pervasivity of machine learning in today's applications. Many examples emerged about the unfair behavior of machine learning classifiers that may lead to important discriminations in critical contexts. One of these examples emerged in 2016, in which a computer program, a sort of machine learning classifier, exploited a data about offendance recidivism to predict a likelihood score assigned to, it, to each offendant about the, pro the probability of, of committing a future crime. And this software it was revealed to be unfair and biased with respect to a particular class of people. This example and many other, other examples made clear how much is important fairness in machine learning. And moreover, it's important to ask ourselves when and where a machine learning model is fair. So we try to, to, to address the problem of fairness of machine learning by answering this question. Can we provide fairness guarantees about uh, the behavior of, of a machine learning classifier, in particular, in this case, a tree-based classifier? In the, in the literature, the fairness of machine learning is addressed by using the fairness properties that, that can be categorized into two different into two different categories. The first one is the local prop are local properties that predicate over an instance or a specific set of instances. For example, given this tree-based classifier, we can see that's fair on a single individual or on a set of individuals. Then we have also global fairness properties that predicate over a potentially continuous and unbounded subset of instances. For example, given the same tree-based classifier, we can say that's fair on, on a people described by this formula that describes a potentially continuous and unbounded set of people. So uh, we found that in the literature, there are not proposals for verifying global fairness properties for tree-based classifiers. So the problem that we're trying to solve is given a tree-based classifier and a set of sensitive features like sex or race, we would like to find to characterize the subset of the feature space on which the machine learning model is fair with respect to a global fairness property. So we propose a new approach to the global fairness verification of tree-based classifiers. Our synthesizer synthesizes a set of sufficient conditions for fairness that are in the form of logical formulas, like these logical formulas. These logical formulas are global conditions because they predicate over the entire feature space. And moreover, they are highly explainable because they are readily understandable by human experts if these formulas are short. So represent a low complexity. Our verification approach is proved to be sound in the sense that fairness is certified for any instance that satisfies some formula and complete in the sense that all the formulas are able to characterize all the instances where the classifier is fair. Now I will give you an overview about the fairness property considered in our work, that's lack of causal discrimination. In particular, it it belongs to the individual fairness category whose idea is to give similar predictions to similar individuals. And now I will provide you an example in order to understand how lack of causal discrimination works. Let's consider a feature space consisting of the client's loan requests. Let's consider also a subset of the feature space, X1. Let's consider a machine learning classifier that has to assign a risk score to each uh, client loan request. And moreover, let's have a set of sensitive features that contain solely the sex attribute. Then let's consider a client request made by a woman in this case, and then consider exactly the same request, but made by a man. So the two requests differ only on the sex attribute. Then a machine learning cl classifier shows lack of, of causal discrimination on these two instances, if it gives to the two instances the same risk score. But more in general, lack of causal discrimination is a global fairness property because it requires that given a subset of the feature space for any instance, the classifier has to give the same prediction to the original instance and to any other instance 
that differs from the original instance only for the values of the sensitive attribute. In this case, given the woman request, we can consider only another request, so the request made by a man, but we can consider also more complex uh, sensitive attributes. And this is a global notion of fairness. If you're familiar with the research machine learning literature, you may have noticed that the lack of occasional discrimination shows a connection with the stability property used to assess the security of, of machine learning classifiers. Indeed, this property requires that given an instance of the feature space and a sort of definition of an attacker that can manipulate the instance, for example, let's suppose that the attacker can only manipulate the sensitive features of this instance, then the classifier is stable on the instance if and only if for every instance belonging to the set of possible adversarial manipulations, the prediction returned on the, on the adversarial manipulation is the same of the prediction given on the original instance. However, this is a local property because it predicates on a, on a single instance of the feature space, while lack of causal discrimination is a global property. But if we define an attacker as being able only to perturb sensitive features, then here emerge, emerges the connection. And we exploited this connection in our, algo, in our verification algorithm. Now I will give an overview about our real proposals. Our synthesis algorithm exploits a, type, a particular type of analysis called data independent stability analysis that was proposed in our, in, our, in our previous work. This analysis takes in input a tree based classifiers, a definition of an attacker, for example, the attacker may manipulate only the sensitive features of an instance, and it returns in output a set of hyper rectangles that over approximates the set of possible. Uh, set, a subset of the feature space on which the classifier may be unstable. If we consider an attacker as being able only to modify the sensitive features, then in this, then in a subset of the feature space identified by these hyper rectangles, the tree based classifier may perform causal discrimination. In the figure, we have an example of two hyper rectangles returned by our data independent stability analysis. And now I will explain you how this input is exploited. In particular, we know that in the region of the feature space identified by the, the upper rectangles, the classifier may exhibit causal discrimination. So outside this region of the feature space, the classifier is guaranteed to exhibit lack of causal discrimination. So if we are able to characterize the region of the, the, region of the, of the feature space outside the upper rectangles, then we can produce sufficient conditions for fairness provided by the tree-based classifier. So our synthesizer takes an input the upper rectangles. It starts by generating conditions, logical formulas that uh, identify regions of the feature space outside of the upper rectangles. For example, in, it may generate the condition x1 less than equal to one that identifies a region of the feature space outside the two upper rectangles. So it's a sufficient condition for fairness. And the same also for the condition x2 less than equal to two. However, there may be other conditions that identify region of the view space that intersect some hyper rectangles. For example, the condition x1 greater than 5 intersects the hyper rectangle u, u2. So this is not a sufficient condition for fairness. And the same holds for the condition x2 greater than 6 and x1 less than equal than 4. So there, are, so there are conditions that will be returned by the synthesizer that are sufficient condition for fairness and other conditions that need to be refined in order to identify a region of the visual space that are outside the, the upper rectangles. So in the next step, the synthesizer takes two conditions that, doesn't identif that don't identify sufficient condition for fairness and tries to combine them. These two conditions may identify the, identify the region X, X1 greater than 5 and X2 greater than 6. But this region is, is outside the, the upper rectangles. So this, re so this formula represents a sufficient condition for fairness. But the desired two conditions combined together generated the condition x1 less than equal to 4 and x2 greater than 6 that identify a region that intersects some upper rectangles. So this is not a, a, sufficient, a sufficient condition for fairness and it needs to be refined again. Our synthesizer per uh, performs by iterations. And in a single iteration, so the synthesizer takes uh, conditions that don't uh, that aren't a sufficient, sufficient condition for fairness 
and tries to combine them. And in the checking steps, the synthesizer uh, compares these conditions against the, the upper rectangles in order to identify new sufficient conditions for fairness. At, at iteration k, the a synthesizer produces conditions long k, so containing k predicates. For example, this logical formula is, is generated at the second iteration of our algorithm. So in order, in order to sum up, our synthesizer is an iterative algorithm that generates increasingly complex sufficient conditions for fair, ensuring lack of causal discrimination because the predicates of over subset of the visual space outside the, the, the upper rectangles. The conditions will be short and easy to understand, but if more computational resources are, are available, then the analyst may decide to run more iterations and to produce longer formulas that are also less explainable. Finally, our synthesizer is, is proved to be sound and complete, and you can find more, more details in the full paper. Now I will give you details about our experimental evaluation of, of our proposal. We, we evaluated our proposal over three different axes. One is the precision of the analysis, and the second is the explainability of the conditions, and the fourth one is the performance evaluation in terms of time of the analysis. Now we will discuss only the explainability of the generated conditions, and the experimental setting is the following. We consider a random forest as a machine learning classifier. As data set, we consider the adult data set associated to us assigning a, a early steep, an early stipend to each individual. Then we consider two data sets, one test set associated to the original training set, and a set of random instances gen generated uh, synthetic instances that uh, help us to have a larger view of the feature space. And a sensitive feature is the feature sex. So the first question that we had to answer was, uh, how much is the subset of the feature space outside the hyper rectangles covered by the conditions? In order to answer this question, we try to compute the percentage of instances of the two sets outside the hyper rectangles covered by the fairness conditions. And in this plot, I show some results. We have the number of iterations on the x-axis and the percentage of instances covered in the y-axis. And you can and you can see that the if, if we consider uh, the conditions of a complexity less than, less than six, then these conditions are, are expressive enough to establish useful fairness proofs because the coverage of the instances is almost total. However, you can, however, our experimental evaluation may clear that the number of generated conditions may increase significantly, significantly as the number of conditions increases, of, of iterations increases, for example, at the fifth iterations, 300 formulas are generated. So the second question that we had to answer was, are we able, so is the subset of the generated condition sufficient to cover a large part of the subset of the feature space on which the machine learning model is fair? So in order to answer the, this question, we try to select the, the top K formulas by importance, exploiting a greedy strategy that takes into account the distribution of the training set. And in this plot, I show you some results. We have the number of top, of top conditions considered on the x-axis and a percentage of instance covered in the y-axis. Here, I show you the baseline, so the coverage by considering all the instances, and also the coverage obtained by considering the top conditions. And this plot made clear that if we consider the test set, short logical formulas are sufficient to, to give fairness guarantees about the, the test set. But if we consider a set of random instances that give us a larger view of the feature space, then, then more conditions may be needed to cover all the feature space outside the, the upper rectangles. However, the conclusion is that short logical formula, that a number of, of important formula is, is relatively small in practice, but we may need also more formulas in order to cover better the the portion of the feature space on which the classifiers show lack of causal discrimination. So in conclusion, we have that, uh, is machine learning unfair? It may be unfair, but we are able to identify whether a machine learning classifier exhibits lack of causal discrimination. So it's fair. Our synthesizer synthesizes the fairness conditions that are in the forms of logical formulas. These are global conditions because they predicate over the entire feature space and not over precise set 
instances of the test set. And these conditions are explainable because they are readily understandable by human experts because they are very short. So our analysis is explainable, precise, and reasonably efficient from the point of view of, of performance in terms of time. And you can find more details in the, in, in the full paper or, or by discussing the poster with us. So that's all. Thanks a lot. If you have any, any, any question, I can answer your question. And I'm uh, Lorenzo.